Now we'll talk about the limit theorems. Think of these as the mathematical properties of limits, or how limits work mathematically. And I'll just put these up on screen here. I'll write these in, and if you're taking notes on the page, you can, you can just write them in as well. But here's our, our starting point. Assume that we have a function f, and the limit as x approaches some value, we'll call it a, the limit of function f exists, and we also have a function g, and the limit of function g exists. So both of those limits exist. So just imagine two functions, f and g, that both have a limit at a, then the following are true. Number one, the limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the limits. So we can write that theorem like this. The limit as x approaches a of, and I'll write f of x plus g of x. So the limit of this sum, these two things added together, the limit of that equals the sum of the limits. That equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And that should strike you as fairly intuitive. That basically you could think of this as the limit here distributing across this addition. We can have the limit of f plus the limit of g. And that's what we have over here. All right, number two, the limit of a constant times a function equals the constant times the limit of the function. That's also pretty straightforward. Let's write this in the mathematical notation. The limit is x approaches a of some constant times a function. So the limit of c times f of x, where c is a constant. Well, that equals the constant times the limit of the function. So c times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. So in other words, this, the c, the constant multiplier, can just be moved outside of the limit. Number three, the limit of product equals the product of the limits. Okay, the limit of a product, that would be this. The limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x. And that equals the product of the limits. So that will be the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And let's put that whole thing in parentheses. That times the limit as x approaches a of g of x. So that you can think of the limit as distributing over the multiplication. We have the limit of this times that. So it's the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x, which is just what we wrote there. Okay, number four. The limit of a quotient equals the quotient of the limits. Okay, we'll write this the same way. The limit of a quotient would be the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x. The limit of that that equals the quotient of the limits. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x over the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And that's, that's valid as long as this denominator is not zero. The limit of function g as x gets really close to a can't be zero. Okay, and then number five, the, the limit of a quotient does not exist if the denominator is zero while the numerator is not. So here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is not zero. So the limit as x approaches a of function f is not zero, and the limit as x approaches a of function g is zero, then the limit of the quotient there, the limit 
as x approaches a of f over g. Okay, think about that. The limit of f over g. If the limit of g is 0, then that gives us a, a 0 denominator right there. So my sentence here, to complete this correctly, if the limit of f is not equal to 0 and the limit of g is equal to 0, then this limit right here, f over g, does not exist. The limit of f over g does not exist. Then number 6. Uh, number 6 is the interesting one. And this, this is the one that's the most important for the study of calculus. If the numerator and denominator are both 0, the limit of a quotient may or may not exist. And that may strike you as obvious because if, if it does exist or does not exist, of course, that exhausts all logical possibilities. Something either exists or it doesn't. But it's worth noting right here. Let's write this down. If the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to 0, so the limit of function f is equal to 0, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals 0, then the limit as x approaches a of f over g may or may not exist. And I'm out of room there. Let me clear up some space here. Then the limit of f over g, I'll write, may or may not exist. And, um, and here's some elaboration on that. Think about what we know about basic fractions. If you have one number a over b, one number over another, okay, you know some basic ideas. If the denominator is really huge compared to the numerator, then this thing gets really small. Or if the numerator is really small compared to the denominator, then the value of the fraction as a whole gets really small. So if a equals 0, then this fraction basically equals 0. If a, if a equals 0, or if it's really close to 0, if a is approximately 0, then a over b is approximately 0. But now think about b getting really small. Okay, if b is approximately 0, if b gets really tiny and, and a doesn't, then the value of this fraction gets huge. So if b is approximately 0, then a over b is, this is not really a technically correct notation here, I'm going to say approximately infinity, that a over b gets really huge if the denominator gets really small. So we, we understand what happens if the numerator gets really small, the fraction heads towards 0. If the denominator gets really small, the fraction heads, heads toward infinity. But what if they both get really small? What if we have 0 over 0? Well, we can't really calculate 0 over 0, but we can deal with the limits when those things are getting infinitely close to 0. And so what does this work out to be? Does it work out to be 0 because there's a 0 numerator? Or does it work out to be infinity because there's a zero denominator? Well, it turns out it could be either one. It could be zero, it could be infinity, or it could work out to some finite value in between. And those cases are where the interesting problems in calculus show up, where we have what would normally be a zero over zero calculation that we can't compute, but we can do it, we can do the calculation involving limits, and we can find that a limit may exist there, and it may have a finite non-zero value. Okay, back to this page and a couple more comments. Uh, all of the facts that we've gone over here, all of these limit theorems, are, are also true for one-sided limits. And then I want to go over two more ideas that should strike you as fairly obvious. The limit as x approaches a of c. So this is a constant function. In other words, if you were to graph this, it would just have some constant value, some constant value c right there. Well, it doesn't matter what a value you're approaching, the height of the function right there is always going to be c. So the limit as x approaches a of c is c. And we can also say this, the limit as x approaches a of x 
So in other words, we have the function y equals x, basically. So if here is x and f of x, we have this function, where the y value is always equal to the x value. So if you're at some, fun some point a on the x-axis, or if you're approaching some value a on the x-axis, well, that's going to correspond to the same value a on the y-axis, because this is the line y equals x or f of x equals x. So the limit as x approaches a of x is always a. Those, those two ideas right there should strike you as necessarily true with just a little bit of thought.